The Solomon Islands are back in the news. The government there is signing a security pact with China. Uh, under the security pact, uh, let me read part of it from what was the leaked draft. It says, it'll allow the Solomon Islands to request the presence of Chinese police and military personnel to assist in maintaining social order, protecting people's lives and property, providing humanitarian assistance, carrying out disaster response, or providing assistance on other tasks agreed upon by the Solomon Islands and China. And everything in this pact is done with the consent of the Solomon Islands. If the government there says no, then China cannot do it. Uh, it also says that there are provisions for Chinese ships to visit ports among the Solomon Islands to carry out logistical replenishment, as well as provisions for Chinese forces to protect the safety of Chinese personnel and major projects in the Solomon Islands. And again, this must all be done with the consent of the government there in the Solomon Islands. Now, why is this necessary? This is actually necessary for the Solomon Islands and for China because the Solomon Islands desperately wants peace and stability so that they can have prosperity. And China has a lot of investments there and they would like to invest further and they cannot do that if uh, every couple of years, uh, armed mobs come to the main island and try to burn down the capital uh, where all their businesses are operating. So th this is where this security pact has, has come from. Now, I re reported on the Solomon Islands late last year in November. There were violent riots in Haniara, the capital, on the main island Guadalcanal. And these protesters, these rioters came from Malaita. This is uh, another main island of this archipelago. And actually, it has a slightly larger population than the main island, Guadalcanal. Uh, and they came and they, they tried to burn down Chinatown. And all of this goes back to 2019, when the government of the Solomon Islands switched recognition from uh, Taipei, the administration uh, um, in Taipei, Taiwan, to Beijing essentially recognizing China's one China policy, like virtually every other country on earth does. Up until then, they had been recognizing the government in Taipei as the, the government, the official government of all of China, because people might not realize this, but Taiwan is not actually a real country. Uh, and the government there calls itself the Republic of China. And even in their own constitution, they say that Taiwan is just a province uh, among greater China. It's just like China. Uh, Beijing says that Taiwan is a province. So does the Republic of China based in Taipei. And so this has been going on for decades now. And hardly any country recognizes uh, Taipei as the actual government of China. Even the US doesn't, even though they, they pretend like Taiwan is an a, a real country. But technically, they don't. They don't have an embassy in Taiwan, and Taiwan doesn't have an embassy in the US, and the same goes for Australia. Australia also recognizes the One China policy. So what are they doing? Why are they doing this? Uh, they're using the Solomon Islands. Again, they're, they're using a country as a proxy to agitate their, their adversary, which in this case is China. They're doing something very similar to Russia through Ukraine, for example. Or, or what they're trying to do to China through actually Taiwan. And uh, some people will say even through Australia, the US is using Australia to wage a, a kind of a proxy conflict with China. And so that is what the Solomon Islands has become. And there is division within the Solomon Islands. So the, the main island, Guadalcanal, where the capital is, Haniara, uh, is facing separatism from Malaita. And who is backing this separatism? Who do you think is backing the separatism? It's the United States, it's Australia, and it's Taiwan. Now, you will hear the Western media decrying this security pact between China and the Solomon Islands. But the fact is, there was already a security pact between the Solomon Islands and Australia and also New Zealand. And when there are riots, deadly riots like there were at the end of last year, Australia actually sent uh, military personnel to the Solomon Islands to help, you know, calm everything down. But 
it's like having the fox watching the hen house. Uh, Australia's interests in the Solomon Islands beyond just using it as a pawn and, and doing so in a subordinated context to uh, Washington's foreign policy and its use of the Solomon Islands as a pawn. Beyond that, they don't really care about the Solomon Islands. And that is reflected in the absolute lack of real development aid given to this archipelago. This is supposed uh, photographs of the draft document. I'll put this in the video description below. Uh, this, this article right here, news of China's security pact with Solomon Islands generates suspicion, offense, and backtrack. A draft agreement between China and the Solomon Islands signed on Thursday intends to address the island's soft and hard domestic threats, says Haniara, the capital. And yes, there, there are. There are hard threats like violent armed uh, rioters trying to burn down the capital and also soft threats. This, this money that the US and Australia and Taiwan have been dumping into the Solomon Islands to manipulate and interfere in the internal political affairs of the country. Uh, I'm also going to include this Guardian article from 2021, Solomon Islands unrest, three bodies found in burnt out building. And they're going to talk about the impact of these riots and the destruction that they brought. Uh, they also mentioned the Australian uh, peacekeepers, they're calling them soldiers, essentially, who are sent by the request of, of the Solomon Islands because they have no one else to turn to. And this is the problem. This is why they want a security pact with China so that they can actually call someone who actually cares about restoring stability rather than calling someone who, who pretty much set the fire in the first place. Now, I'm talking about uh, the West and their regional allies bribing political opposition in the Solomon Islands to create these problems. And that's not me imagining that. That's not the Solomon Islands saying it on their own. It's also Western publications like The Diplomat. So this is from 2020. USAID pledge to pro-Taiwan Solomon Islands province raises eyebrows. So here's the thing. In 2019, so this article is from 2020. In 2019, the government of the Solomon Islands switched recognition from Taiwan, uh, Taipei, Taiwan to Beijing. But Malaita did not. They continue recognizing Taiwan and they're, they're even seeking uh, independence so that they can continue doing this, which makes no sense, has nothing to do with the best interests of any of the people actually living on Malaita, and is solely the result of the US and Australia and Taiwan dumping bribe money into Malaita, uh, into, into the pockets of these politicians to get them to act like this. So what is The Diplomat, a Western publication? What do they say? They say the United States has pledged 25 million in aid to the Solomon Islands province of Malaita, which has in recent weeks made calls for succession from the national government over its relationship with China. Again, why would you do that? Everyone knows that uh, China is pretty much the largest trade partner for every nation in the Indo-Pacific region, including the Solomon Islands. And I will show you just how, how true that is here in a moment. So why would they do this, except for the fact that these politicians are being bribed to pursue a policy that otherwise completely goes against the best interests of everyone living there? Malaita, the largest province in the Solomon Islands, announced its plan to hold a referendum on independence last month citing the central government's switch in diplomatic relations with Taiwan to China last year. The decision has put Malaita at odds with the rest of the country as Malaita preferred to continue relations with Taiwan. You don't, you don't get to carve up a country over an issue like this, especially when you're receiving millions and millions of dollars from foreigners who are obviously giving you this money for you to pursue this policy. And, and for you to deliberately divide and destroy the Solomon Islands for daring to defy the West. The U.S. aid package, more than 50 times what the province received in aid from all countries in 2018, has sparked concerns that Washington is using the aid for geopolitical gain to counter China despite the risks it poses in flaring old tensions. So this was in 2020, and then there were deadly riots a year later. And, and that is exactly why the U.S. is pumping this money 
into the Solomon Islands to divide and destroy it, not, not aid in development in any way. Here's the other issue. The Solomon Islands government all, has also said that the aid still needs to go through proper channels and be approved by the cabinet. They're trying to send this money to Malaita without sending it through the, the central government of the Solomon Islands first. So it is very obvious interference by the United States, an obvious blatant violation of the UN Charter, complete interference in the Solomon Islands internal political affairs and toward the goal of dividing and destroying the country. And uh, just so you know, Chinese aid decreased from 241 million in 2018 to 121 million in 2019. Uh, so you, you see the US throwing money in there to try to reverse this process, this growing relationship between the Solomon Islands and China. And you see China doing the opposite. They're taking away aid money because they know just throwing money at, at a country is not how you spur development. You actually have to go in there and build infrastructure. You have to help with education. You have to do actual things on the ground to make those changes happen. The US pumps that money and saying that it's for development when it's clearly for bribery. And they actually use the word bribery in this article. This is from 2021, December 2021. This is after the deadly riots. Uh, Taiwan must avoid pouring fuel on Solomon Islands fire. The Solomon Islands is a tinderbox of complex ethnic tensions, corruption, and competing local interests, meaning interference from Beijing or Taipei can have disastrous consequences. So first of all, this article is noting that, that these riots happen have happened before. Last year was not, not the first time this has happened. There were protests in 2006. And then uh, this, this is a policy paper from 2007, and they say the havoc in Haniara uh, is a physical expression of the destructive impact that Taiwan and China can have on, a small island, on small island states. We found that in the Solomon Islands, where governments are totally disoriented, in fact, just about destroyed by interventions of this kind, just a few bribes to the right people at the top, and you have undermined the whole governing system. And this was just months before extra troops were sent from Australia and New Zealand, and, and they were to bolster a mission that had already been ongoing since 2003 because of these divisions. And it says, in fact, while the bribery became more sophisticated, it had previously been indiscriminate. In June 2001, a $25 million loan to the Solomon Islands from Taiwan's Export-Import Bank was announced by Taipei. The suitably vaguely stated purpose was to foster peace by compensating the victims of the ethnic conflict that had ravaged the island since 1998. But while some of the money went to legitimate causes, displaced families and unpaid civil servants, the lion's share ended up lining the pockets of politicians and militia leaders. Armed gangs held up government ministers for compensation as Haniara descended into mob rule. And so when you see an armed mob led by these, they're admittedly separatists from Malaita, trying to burn down Haniara. That is why they're doing it. It's because they're being paid off to do it. It's just like a color revolution that the US engineers anywhere else in the world. They build up these opposition groups, they fund them, and then it'll come to a head where you will have these violent episodes where, where they're trying to overthrow a government or coerce a government into reversing a policy decision like recognizing Beijing instead of Taipei. Now, you see the United States and Australia and Taiwan having this oversized political influence over the Solomon Islands. So you would think that they must have a very significant economic role in the islands as well, right? And wrong. So let's just check this out. This is 2019. This is from the Harvard University Atlas of Economic Complexity. Where did Solomon Islands export to in 2019 there? By far, largest export partner is China. 65, over 65% 65 of the Solomon Islands exports go to China. How many go to Taiwan? Not even 2%. What about the United States? Not even 1%. How about Australia? Not even 1%. Be between the three of them, it looks like uh, probably not even 3% versus China. 
And what about imports? Again, China is the Solomon Islands' largest import partner. Australia is second, and Australia benefits from proximity to the Solomon Islands. Uh, but even still, uh, the Solomon Islands import less from Australia than they do from China. China is their most important trade partner. And in addition to that, in 2019, after the Solomon Islands recognized Beijing over Taipei, they joined the Belt and Road Initiative. And this article from ABC, this is Australian News, talked about uh, some of the deals that that would entail. So one of the deals would see Solomon Islands become a destination country for Chinese tourists. What people need to take away from this is that the United States doesn't care about what's best for the Solomon Islands. All they care about is stopping the rise of China. And if that means burning the Solomon Islands to the ground, sinking them into the ocean so that nobody can have them, then they will do that. They will try to do that. That is what the United States does everywhere. The Belt and Road Initiative passes through. I've talked about Pakistan, the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, how the U.S., since at least 2011, they have been arming and backing militants who, who want to carve off southwest Pakistan, a region called Baluchistan, off from the country. Separatism, again, more separatism. And they were attacking infrastructure projects in Pakistan. They were killing Chinese engineers. They made an attempt on the life of the Chinese ambassador to Pakistan. In Myanmar, there are projects in Myanmar that US-backed opposition groups have attacked both politically and physically. And uh, I'm based in Thailand and even here in Thailand, there, there aren't armed attacks on Chinese infrastructure projects, but the US-backed opposition has openly called for canceling the Thai-Chinese high-speed rail link, which would join up to the high-speed rail link already finished and in operation in neighboring Laos. They wanna cancel that and they want to replace it with uh, the Hyperloop, which doesn't even exist. It's technology that does not exist. It's being very slowly prototyped in the desert in the United States, and it will not move passengers for years and years to come. While China's high-speed rail technology moves billions of people every year. So this is what the US does everywhere. And this is exactly what they're doing in the Solomon Islands. And that is why the Solomon Islands needs a security pact with China, because when the, the riots start, they cannot call Australia to come and reliably stop it. Because Australia is part of the problem. You do not call the fox to watch the hen house. And because this security pact with China will go far in ensuring peace and stability in the Solomon Islands, this is why the West is trying to oppose it. So we'll keep an eye on the Solomon Islands. We'll keep an eye on how this pact develops, how it's implemented, and what the US and Australia, and also Taiwan, what they try to do to derail this. We have to be really careful and really keep our eyes open. Now that you know the background, it should be a lot easier to decipher what you see and hear in the news in the days, weeks, and months to come. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share it. Think about subscribing, it's free to do and it helps the channel grow. If you're watching this on YouTube, please check the video description below to see where else you can find my work. In case I'm deleted off of YouTube, I'm also on Odyssey and Rumble. I also update my Telegram account on a regular basis. So if you're not on, on Telegram, you should join Telegram. Uh, follow me, of course, but also there's a lot of other really great accounts there who have been chased off of Twitter and or Facebook like I have. In the video description below, there will be all of the links that I just referenced and a couple of extra ones I'll throw in there if you want to read up on the Solomon Islands that those will be great articles to start with, uh, even though they're from the Western media, but at least no one can accuse you of reciting Chinese propaganda. Also in the video description below are ways you can help support my work. You can do that through Buy Me A Coffee, Patreon, and PayPal. And to everyone who has been supporting my work, thank you so much. Whether it's once a month or one-time donations, or even if you're just helping share my work with others or sending news tips and kind words, I really appreciate that. I could not do this work without that support. So thank you. As always, thank you for watching.